Coming up next on a very special dark mode edition of Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at a new feature in Windows 11 23H2 called Dynamic Lighting. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt, and I'm sitting in the dark with hands on windows. Um, we didn't have a power outage. I wanted to discuss dynamic lighting, which is a new feature in Windows 11 version 23 H2. And the best way to do that is to actually have some dynamic lighting, right? Um, most people are probably familiar with and maybe even have some form of dynamic lighting in their home. Uh, we have Philips Hue lights, for example, and that's what I have. That's what this is. This doesn't actually integrate with windows, but I can kind of move the color wheel around and red, orange, yellow, green, you know, blue, whatever. Normally, of course, it's kind of like this, but you know, you can have fun lighting, whatever it might be. Um, but in the PC space, hardware makers, companies that make things like keyboards, mice, uh, monitors, uh, game controllers, and other hardware have been using RGB lighting uh, in these products for a long time. Um, there's a bunch of different companies to, that do that. There's a bunch of new products that are coming out now, too, that include such things as ambient lighting, which is more like the Philips Hue stuff. You might have like a... Um, a light a ring around the back of your monitor that pulsates in different colors, or I could have lights on that shelving unit behind me or whatever. Um, the only issue with that stuff is that each company has their own software, right? So if you buy a Razer product, use the Razer Synapse or whatever the software there is called. If you buy a product from a different company, use their software. And if you want to create kind of a scene, um, you have to go into each app and configure those things separately. And so Microsoft decided to add a central management capability for this functionality right in Windows. And uh, these hardware makers can integrate into this system. And uh, you as the user can kind of pick and choose if you want to use the Microsoft version, the, the version from the third party hardware maker. You can mix and match. There's different ways to do it. So I only have one dynamic lighting compatible device as I record this video. And it's not particularly exciting, but it's, it is actually a nice little bit of hardware, but it's a... Uh, a Razer key, uh, gaming keyboard, right? And this can do all kind, you know, all the rainbow of colors and all that kind of stuff. So I'll hold this up as we go uh, here and there, so you can kind of see what the differences are as we um, go through this system. So, from the perspective of Windows 11, this all occurs in the Settings app, and you go to Personalization, and it's right here under Dynamic Lighting. I find it interesting, by the way, that this gets more prominence than start or taskbar personalization. They were obviously very excited about this feature, um, but it's a very simple interface. Um, you get a card, which to me looks like a tile, but we're not using that term anymore, I guess, uh, at the top for each one of your compatible devices. So if I, if I had two, three, four more, that you'd see a, a big row of those things here. And then you get these global controls at the bottom. And so the system works like this. You can have these options, these settings for all devices at once, or you can click into any one of the devices, again, in my case, just the one, and have exactly the same options for all of them. Um, it's not a bad system. The only issue is you can't combine them into scenes or groups yet. And I'm, I'm thinking that must be coming because it's so obvious. Of course, it doesn't matter for me anyway, because I can't um, I can't do anything about it anyway. <laughs> so as far as these options go, uh, this is just the global toggle on off, right? You turn this thing off. You want to use your Razer software or software from another company. You can do that. Um, you can also, like I said, mix and match. And so you could uh, leave dynamic lighting on, but then allow those third party apps to take precedence if they're running, right? Um, on this particular computer, I've done this different ways on different computers. On this one, I actually do not have the third party software installed. So turning this off doesn't really change anything. It's not going to matter. Um, if you have some sort of ambient light control, again, that would be like the, the lights on the back of the monitor, maybe under your desk on the shelving unit behind me or whatever, um, you will probably get a background light control um, here. I I've done this one time. I don't have it on this particular system, but the way that this works is you can set an order of precedence here by dragging and dropping whatever options you have. So um, the one I had, I think it was called uh, Auth Oro. Um, you, I would say, well, I want the Oro to take precedent over the lighting controller provided by the system or vice versa, that kind of thing. Um, you can control obviously the brightness of all devices or just the one device, depending on where you are. And then where the fun kind of happens is effects. And, um, We'll get to that in one second, because that's really where you change all the colors and, and 
you know, decide what you want these things to look like. Um, like I said, you, you have this choice. We're going to use dynamic lighting or we're not, or you can mix and match. And I, it, it's not, it's pretty straightforward um, with the understanding that uh, there are a couple of things um, missing. Grouping is hard. Uh, you have to manually control each device or whatever number of devices you want to be in, uh, in what might have otherwise been called a scene. And mixing and matching can be a little hard, uh, depending on the software. Um, the Razer software I've been using does have a, a switch that will uh, allow dynamic lighting to take precedent over its own software, which is the right way to do it. It's a little buggy. I don't think it's Razer's fault per se, but it's early days and uh, I'll give them a pass on that for now. So let's go and look at what effects are available. There are several. You can see here solid color, breathing, uh, solid color, breathing, rainbow, wave, wheel, and gradient. The default is solid color and it's set to match the windows accent color which in my case is kind of a light purple and hopefully you can see that is sort of a light purple i don't know if i can get that exactly right um actually it's very similar to the light i have uh, ambiently here in the room uh, but i could turn that off and i could just have a single color of you know various kinds right so pretty straightforward um some of these are kind of interesting some of them not so much but this one it, it sort of pulsates the <laughs> that whatever color you choose it works with a single color i find that this keyboard is a little too jaggy it's not very good going between those different gray uh, different levels but you know different uh, types of hardware that would actually work better you can also control the speed obviously that's a little fast uh, for my taste um rainbow is exactly what it sounds like it cycles through a set of rainbow colors right and brightness uh here and then i'm sorry brightness is outside of there uh again the effect speed i'll just turn it up a little bit so it kind of <laughs> spazzily go from color to color but uh you can also go forward or backwards through the the rainbow colors um wave is a uh the first one that has two colors right so we have a main color now and a second color and this allows it to transition between those two colors in some direction right um right, left, up, or down. For a keyboard, obviously up, down doesn't make a lot of sense. There's a lot of space there, but I could go say from yellow to, uh, well, I guess blue. Um, and we could do it right to left, right? So it gives you that kind of, you can see the, the color kind of banding across there. It's kind of fun. And again, you can uh, change the speed. Um, wheel is again, another one with uh, main and secondary colors. I should also say, by the way, in both of these, you do have this full color capability if you want to really uh, customize the color. I'm not sure exactly with this hardware, how many different colors it supports. That might be a little um, more difficult and might or might not look as good. Um, but this, this allows a different type of direction. So it kind of goes in a, a circular motion. I'm not sure how clear that is on the screen, but it is doing a, a kind of a transition there, right? Same thing with the effect speed and so forth. And then my favorite actually is gradient. And um, especially if you put it uh, in this outward mode. So um, this it's better just to show you, like I'll do a red to blue kind of a thing. So it just has this kind of really pleasant effect. And I, and anyone who's ever used a gaming PC with RGB color, you know, keyboard is probably looking at this and saying, yep, this is, uh, exactly what I've seen before. It's very, you know, it's very familiar and so forth. Um, but again, you can, you can configure this however you'd like all the different colors and so forth. So it's, it's actually, it's pretty straightforward, right? And it's, um, it's not hard to configure. It just gets more complicated when you add devices, which again, I can't really show you, unfortunately, but um, people who are really into this, if you're a gamer and so forth, and you have special software that maybe is giving you an ambient representation of the game on the wall behind the display where it's, you know, transferring the color scheme from the game out to the wall and giving it kind of a, a visceral uh, peripheral effect. This isn't going to be for you, right? But I, I think that this type of thing is going to become a little bit more mainstream. It's not just for gamers. Even in my own office, I wouldn't work in the dark like this, but uh, we have hue lights out in our living room. We have hue lights outside on the porch. Um, I would like to have a little bit of kind of ambient light in here, but I would especially like it to blend in with my Windows desktop, for example, so that maybe the lights on the wall behind my display match the color scheme of whatever backdrop I had here on the monitor. Um, and I think that's where this is going to come into play. So, you know, hardcore gamers, not so much, uh, mainstream windows users, you know, maybe <laughs> if we can get you to buy, um, the peripherals, you know, that are compatible, um, finding those peripherals is a little difficult, by the way. Um, Microsoft has a link here for, uh, you know, finding out who supports this and where you can find more information. I, I find this page to be out of date all the time. 
Um, it is where I started. Um, I, I, you'll have a much better uh, outcome if you go and look at the websites for the companies that are making the, uh, these solutions and get and making sure that uh, the devices you buy are compatible, right? Because they'll still work. I mean, they have their own software and so forth. But if you want to integrate into the system and have it be sort of a, a part of the operating system, um, you're going to want to make sure that they are compatible with dynamic lighting. So there you go. I will turn on the lights for the next episode, but thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back every Thursday with a new episode. I wanted to thank everyone uh, for supporting the show, especially Club Twit members. Uh, you can find out more at twit.tv slash H-O-W. See you next week. Thank you.